Greetings, people. It's Mr. Poo, the trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. Today, we have a special guest in the house, and uh, most of you, you agree with him, and I know most of you, you disagree with him, but at the end of the day, you all know the reason why we do these interactions is to try to help an African child and is to try to seek solutions or to make a way forward as to how we can save those that are in blind or those that are in darkness. So as you are joining me in, please indicate where you are watching me from. Indicate if you can hear me loud and clear. Indicate if the visuals are perfect so that we can get into it. With me here is Prophet Sia One. Most of you might not have heard about him, but if you are in Zambia, there is no way under the sun, under God's green earth, that you do not know Prophet Sia One. I greet you, watching you from Lusaka, Zambia. Greetings, Mr. Pull the Trigger. Greetings, Prof X. I'll beat you soon. Hello, watching you from uh, Ukraine. How can you be watching me from Ukraine when there is, uh, you know, when there is war in Ukraine? Greetings, Mr. PDT. I see you. I see you. Greetings, watching you from the United States. Please indicate, watching you from UK, please indicate if you can hear me loud and clear, and please like the video, share the video, the message that you will receive today, and the line of questioning that we will be throwing towards uh, CR1, they will need so many people to listen to, they will need so many ears to pay attention to. So as I bring more shout outs, watching you from Sri Lanka, I will agree to Nani Kani. Prince Elvis, watching you from Cameroon. Greetings, people. Please join in, join in. Let our numbers increase as fast as possible so that we jump into this conversation <coughs> without further delay. Glory G. Girl, watching you from Malawi. How are you doing in Malawi? Karen Amosutuke, watching you from Zambia. This is going to be a different type of a conversation. This is going to be a hot one. And uh, we literally have more or less than an hour so I'll try by all means to put across through all my questions towards CR1 so that we can uh, have a little bit of maybe five minutes towards the end of the broadcast for you people to call in and ask whatever you also want to ask CR1 that is with me here. Well done, Prof. X. We are watching you from Nigeria. Yes, we can hear you from Kano, Nigeria. Watching you from Cape Town. Watching you from Sweden. I greet you, Fato Jolo. Okay, I know people will join in the process. Let's not waste time, time that we do not have. Prophet Siawan, I greet you, and I welcome you. I greet you, Prof X, and I greet the viewers all over the world. I want to start by asking a very simple question. Why do you call yourself Jacobin? Because I have powers. Mm -hmm. I am done of power. And uh, because of I am done of power, I am called Sia One and other names. And I didn't give myself any of these names. Oh, these are names that came because of the powers that you possess? Yes. Do you care to share what type of powers are they that you have? I have supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. That is what they are. Okay, are these powers transferable? Can they be transferred from one person to another? Can you give them of out? Course. Of course. It can be shared. It can be transferred to people. Are there people under the sun in Africa, maybe let's say prophets, that you have given the same powers that you have? Everybody that knows here, one know that not just one, not just two. I have thousands of people under me, including government leaders. And this is, they are uncountable, not just men and women of God. I mean, successful businessmen and women. Like you mentioned in the beginning of the broadcast, uh, mm. we are not here because we want people to agree with us or love us or maybe speak good things about us. I don't have time for those things. If you follow me, if you know me, 
So there are so many, many people that are uh, under the supernatural power. In the in the bracket of uh, prof, the prophetic, have you Prophet, helped other prophets? Bishop, apostles, uncountable. There are, there are so many. Okay, so when, when a man of God, as they call themselves, come to you to seek for power, what type of power are they asking for? What type of power are they looking for? Supernatural power. People come for crowds. They want to they want to have thousands of people in their church. People come for prophecy. They want to prophesy forensic prophecy. People come for so many powers. People want signs and wonders and miracles. And that's what men and women of God usually come. Okay, so those prophets and pastors that come to you, most of the time they want power to do miracles and yes. to heal the sick. Yes. I saw you have anointings, anointing oils, one of which is called crowd puller, and the other one is called do as I say. What do these set of anointing oils do in the life of people? Of them, all of them are do as I say, Oh, yeah. But in that category, there is for crowd, there is for prophecy, there is for signs, there is for wonders. And all over the world, like, like I said, when when somebody is watching C1 for the first time on your show today, they will say, ah, maybe another another uh, joker or another, mm -hmm. what, you know, the people have so many things to say, but the evidence is clear. All over the world, I have so many people that are using the do as I say, product for so many things. Okay, so it's practically impossible for any of these prophets to have this power without having consulted someone like you, a jagaban like you. There, there are powers. When you go to church, you preach, and you pray for people, that is power enough. When you go to church, maybe you give declaration, and you 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 give the word of god that is power enough when you go to church maybe where there is 200 people you say there is god is telling me there is a woman here you have headache and this headache has been there for two days wherever you are come out this is power also this is declaration this is prophetic and the woman comes out you know out of 200 there must be a person that will come out you know, I say I am the one that is sick. That is power. But when a person comes in church and say, there is a person here, your name is Prof X. You, 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 are, you are 30 years old. You, you, you live in South Africa. You, this detailed prophecy, no one can prophesy it unless you have power or you yeah, use information to prophesy it. So long as you are, it's prophecy and you are giving it out and you're able to mention somebody's name, you're able to mention somebody's particulars, it can never be by the grace of God or by prayer. There is power involved, whether that person is using power to see or that person is using information. So these two things, one must happen in this uh, bracket. What is your source of power? Where did you get your own power? The supernatural power. Okay, how did you get the supernatural power? Were you born with it? <laughs> I was not born with it. I was six years <laughs> six years old mm -hmm. uh, when it started. But I don't want to say the, that one here in uh, mm -hmm. in 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 public in, in public. Yes, but uh, this is supernatural power. Oh, okay. I wanted to venture quickly because I've seen the way you operate and the way you do things. It's quite uh, different from the rest of the people. I mean, from the rest of other prophets that come and claim to be who they are not, that come and start preaching Jesus who they do not believe in, that come and start, you know, quoting the scripture and saying, God this, God this, yet they don't believe in anything that they are saying. But you are one person who has come out on the open and spoke about how you do your things how you operate and you still have a church so the question that i have is are you still subscribed to the religion of christianity or you have started your own religion in the first place i'm not a religious person 
I don't believe in religion, though I am operating a ministry. And uh, in my ministry, we pray. In my ministry, we do so, we sing, we do so many things. But uh, I'm not a religious person. Religion is not good for anybody. Religion is man-made. It was made by a man. It was not made by God. That is why when you come to my church, you will see Muslims. They are there in my church. They are there in my ministry. We don't fight with them because I don't believe in their religion. I don't also believe in Christian religion. I believe that this must be a relationship between man and God. Every person created must develop a relationship between himself and God. So I don't segregate. When you come to my church, you will see uh, um, the people that you call witch doctors, you know, if cultural people, people that follow culture, you know, I don't, I don't segregate. I don't say this one is because you are not a Christian. You are not allowed in my church. You are not a Christian. You are not allowed to participate. Uh, religion was created by men. And because it was created by men, there is a lot and a lot of mistakes. Which, when you want me to talk, I'm going to talk about. Religion mm -hmm. makes people uh, stupid. Religion makes people behave like fools. Religion has divided families. Prof. X, you may be in agreement with me or you may not be in agreement with me. In a family where there are seven people, one go to Catholic church, the other one go to Pentecostal church, the other one go to Salvation Army, the other one go to Lord Chusey, the other one, they go to different churches. Those churches automatically makes them enemies. People mm. have come to my office and bring the picture of their mother and they tell me that they went to church somewhere and the prophet prophesied that their mother is a witch. And because their mother is a witch, their mother must be killed. So the prophet is praying for the mother to be killed. And the mother has not been killed. So see, I want to pray for us, help us to kill our mother because our mother is a witch. These are the things that religion brought to us. A woman that carried you in the womb for nine good months. A woman that sacrificed everything for you. Just because you have grown up, you're able to shout Holy Ghost fire. You're able to go from church to church. You have risen up and say, my mother is a witch. Because a prophet, a religious person told you that your mother is a witch. Religion has brought more harm to us in Africa. Where we pray more than we work. When you come to Nigeria, in Oweri here, in Imo State, where I am today, you will see a child of God, somebody that call himself a child of God that go to church from Monday to Sunday. On Sunday, they start in the morning, close in the evening. On Monday, they go for service. On Tuesday, they go for service. On Wednesday, they go for service. On Thursday, they go for service. On Friday, they go for service. On Saturday, they go for sanctuary. On Sunday, they go back to church. This is religion, and because of this, Africa has been destroyed. Nigeria is that country that religion has destroyed. We have great churches, great men and women of God in Nigeria, but we are producing criminals as our leaders. We are producing poverty as a nation. The more we pray, the more we are poor. These are the works of religion. When you are a religious person, you are brainwashed. A white man from wherever they are, I, I gave an example in one of my ministrations the other day. A white man will come to Nigeria for a crusade. He will see that people are very hungry. He will gather 20,000 people, 30, 40,000 people. Majority of them are hungry. They don't, they don't have food. They don't have anything. He will pray for them. After praying for them, he will give them the Holy Bible and tell them to start studying the word of God. 
in that crusade that white man will raise partners partners that will give him millions they will take those millions go back to their countries and build industries they will build where they produce car they will build serious industry where they produce phones but they will never build those things in africa they will never build those things in nigeria the only thing a white man can give us here in africa is the holy bible and the more we read the bible the more we become very stupid the more we read the bible and get brainwashed the more we lose out renan bonke came to nigeria and in his crusade had over seven million people from different venues he saw that nigeria is a very poor country which industry did he bring to nigeria so the white man that brought religion to us preferred to teach us how to pray preferred to teach us how to go to heaven preferred to teach us how to relate with god but will never show us the way to make money here on earth that is why i don't believe in religion i am not a racist but i've worked in a white community church in south africa it's called solid rock church i've dealt with white people i've read my history i see a one I've read my history as a black person. I have read my history as an African. I've read my history as a Pan-Africanist. And I can tell you that a white man will never show a black man the way to heaven. If there is a way to heaven and the white man has discovered it, they will never show it to us. Prof X, you may not agree with me, and so many other brainwashed people that are watching me now, they will not uh, uh, agree with me today. But uh, if Holy Bible and the religion was going to show us to a place that is built and designed with gold all over in heaven, our mansions in heaven. If they we are willing to give us Bible and show us the way, why are they not willing to show us the way here on earth so that we enjoy like they do? Prof X, when Nigeria finish uh, doing budget presentation, they go to white people, they borrow money from white people to sponsor the project. We have oil in Nigeria, a lot of oil. We are very rich with oil. A white man will fly from their country, come to Nigeria, buy that oil in crude. They don't refine it in Nigeria. They don't want to build refineries, solid refineries in Nigeria. These are people that will show us where there is gold somewhere in heaven but the one we are seeing on earth they get our crude oil they don't want to refine it in our country they take it to their country and refine it there create employment for their people create revenue for themselves and bring it back and sell it to us prof x zimbabwe has a lot of gold in it how many gold refinery are there in zimbabwe Prof X, Zambia is the is the African largest copper producing nation in the world in, in, in Africa. Africa largest copper producing uh, nation in Africa. I want you to point at exactly where electric cable is being manufactured in in, in Zambia white man prefer to come in in the country dig the mineral resources take it to their country they don't want to show us how to refine it they don't want to they don't want us to benefit here on earth and they are willing to show us to heaven where there is good so don't be uh, christianity make us 
religion make us fools. When we talk about this thing, people say, see a one is an antichrist. See a one is a, is a, a satanist. Uh, if you, if you maybe go through the comments or maybe when we are just starting this broadcast, when I was talking about power, you will see people even sending Holy Ghost fire to me already. <laughs> because according to them, Jesus must have power. <laughs> according to them, before Christianity was brought to us in Africa, we had no power. <laughs> so according to them, before Christianity came to Africa, we had no God. According to them, our forefathers, the people that died without receiving Jesus, have gone to hell. And the uh, white people have gone to heaven. There are so many things that I can speak about to prove to you that religion is here to destroy Africa. When you go to white man's church, they don't even take these things serious. They don't take prayer serious. Prof. X, I was a, I was a serving white people at a solid drug church in South Africa. There is there in South Africa, the owner of solid drug television. Prof. X, the man of God is conducting deliverance. A white man, uh, 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 Dr. Joan, is conducting deliverance. Is removing evil spirit from people. Ushers, white men and women, they have cigarettes in their pocket and they are catching the people that are falling under the anointing. <laughs> Religion. <laughs> if that thing was to be done by a black person, an African, they would close the church. <laughs> when we talk about the power that our forefathers had, they say, uh, religion makes us understand that we are worshipping idol. Prof. X, in most churches, including the church that you go to today, Prof. X, you say, you say, God of Abraham, God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob, you call them. You say, God of Abraham, come and perform miracles. There is no problem. No, you, it's not a crime. But today in Africa, there is a person that will slap you for calling the God of your father or your forefather that, that, that is late. There is somebody that will say you are worshipping idol for going to clean the grave of your departed ones. Religion is not here to save Africa. Religion is here to destroy Africa. What is important is establishing a personal relationship with God. Religion makes you understand that everything black is evil. In my church, I remember in South Africa, in, in Limpopo, we decorated the church with black curtains so that the camera quality would be okay. By then, we are running C1 television. One man of God came to church and he said, Hey, Jesus Christ, this church is full of darkness. <laughs> this, why is black everywhere? Where is black? Oh God, Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> Sorry to say. I was laughing. I asked him, what, what is wrong with black color? What is wrong with black? God himself is so wise that he created you and gave you a black hair. So are you telling me that God is not a no? Black is bad. That is why Prof. X, when you go to bed, you sleep tonight in your dream. A white man comes to you, even if you, you, you see him with, with, with gun, you see him with matchet, you see him with bullet. When you wake up in the morning, you say, oh, 
thank you, Jesus. I saw Angel Gabriel. He has come to protect me. You'll be very happy because you saw a, you saw a white man. But go to bed and sleep and see a black person. Maybe your relative that died many years ago. Or maybe your friend that died many years ago. He has come in the spirit. There is something I want to share with you. But because he's a black person and you saw him with a matchet, you wake up. Hey, hey, see, I want to pray for me. Pray for me. I've seen demon. Why? Religion has made us understand that everything black is evil. Everything white is okay. That is religion. Religion, a white man will come to Africa and tell us and give us Bible. They print this Bible, they, they bring it to us, and they say, inside that Bible, they read it to us, that money is the root of all evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in what okay. I'm champion, let me finish this mm -hmm. one, then you can, you can ask me. In what I'm championing, Bible must be revisited. There are so many things written there that is not going anywhere. A white man writes a Bible, or from Rome and bring it to you and tell you that money is the root of all evil. He gives you that Bible and say, buy this Bible. You take that Bible, you give him the money. He will not reject that money because that money is the root of all evil. He gives you Bible, you are reading Bible, he takes your money to go and do business. Is this okay? So religion has brought a lot of calamity on earth. And see, one is not part of those people that can be brainwashed. So what you are against is religion. Yes, I'm against not, religion. Not God. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not against God. I, I serve God. I worship God. I have a ministry. You should, you should follow our, our administration. You understand a lot of things. Many people think that, okay, maybe see, I want to speak like this because he's a Satanist. No one has ever seen Satan before. Uh, uh, there are so many things I can ask. There are so many questions I can ask you today about Satan. To me, if I had the opportunity, I would give Satan an opportunity to speak also because he has not spoken. We have always heard that God speak God did this to Satan. Satan rebelled and chased from heaven. I would love to hear from him to speak also. Because also God himself commanded us to forgive. He said you must forgive anybody, no matter. In fact, he said, he said you must forgive 70 times, seven times. But up to today, Satan has not been forgiven. So me, I want to ask Satan, what is this that we did to God? that you have not been forgiven. According to me, you just rebelled, just rebellious, and you are brought down like nothing. So I want to hear his own part of the story. So unfortunately, people call me Satanist, but I've not seen him. I would be happy to see him because there are things that I want to ask him. He must talk also. So you're saying you want to hear certain side of the story? Hey, of course. It's very important. You can't make decision with one-sided story. We are not being fair in that in that area. See, Owen, are you antichrist? I'm not an anti I'm not an antichrist. I, I've never been an, an antichrist. In my church we pray. But the truth is that in the difference between me and other churches like you have said is that we say the truth in my church we say the truth we don't just do shaky mama 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 ba, 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 and we we'll go home no you must hear the truth you must know where you are coming from a white man must never make you forget your culture i don't know about you in zimbabwe or south africa prof x in my country in nigeria we no longer have trees when we were growing up we used to have what is called Odara tree or Oji tree. These are very big trees in the village that used to give us shade. The Odara tree used to produce some seeds that we used to eat. Now, since the rapid growth of Pentecostal in Nigeria, they have cut all those trees in the name of their chasing demons. 
We don't. We no longer have trees in our villages. Those, uh, come on, tell me, Satan was with God in heaven, according to the scripture. Satan was second from God, according to the scripture. Are you telling me that when he was chased, he only came to Africa? How come there are trees in America? If you go to America and cut big tree, you'll be sued. Even in South Africa here, you go there, you'll be sued. In our, in our villages in Nigeria, we no longer have trees. The climate change is coming to wipe us out because prayer people, Pentecostal people, have cut all the trees here because of prayer. Because they believe that demons, the God that our forefathers served, are living in those trees. This is what the stupidity that religion has brought to us. We cut those trees. We don't have money in Nigeria. When we finish making our national budget, we go to China and borrow. China does not pray. They don't believe in Jesus. When we finish cutting all those trees and praying all these 21 days of prayer and the, all these big, big men and women of God that we have, when we are sick, we go to India and have ourselves get cured because we don't have good hospitals in Nigeria. We don't have good hospitals in Africa. We will pray all those prayers, sow all those seeds, make all those noise. At the end of the day, we go to people that are not praying and look for survival. If you go to the street of Dubai today, you will see African children lying on the street. We are, we are praying. But religion has made us to pray more and work less. Religion took away our brain, took away our culture. And it gave us the culture of white people. Is it good? Let me let me shock you. When you go to a church in uh, South Africa, there you will see a gay human, a, a gay man taking microphone. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's not a problem. You know, it's a, a, gay, a, a gay, a gay, like yes, a gay, a man that, uh, a man that. Uh, Behave like a woman. You will see, they will be saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Man of God will not condemn it. People will not condemn it. But we are a costume, an African costume. Maybe a masquerade, maybe anything. We are it and enter into a church service. The whole church will run away. They will send Holy Ghost fire to you. Jesus Christ, this man has brought devil here. So that's religion for you. That's religion for you. We have lost our culture because of religion. We don't respect ourselves anymore because of religion. Even the food we eat today, religion has actually entered in it. So religion does not do good to us. So what's the best way to connect with God? Let's take it's religion away. I believe religion... It's a mechanism or it's a weapon that was uh, that is being used or that was used by white people as well to colonize the mentality of people. And I believe there's a way to get to God. And uh, before I ask you the question that I want to ask you, you said you believe God is there, right? You are not in art. Of course. Of course. Uh -uh. There is God. Okay. Do you believe in Christ? I believe. Oh, so the only thing that CR1 is against is religion. The way religion. this whole thing of God has been sold to people. Exactly. Let me Do you me. believe in the word of God? I don't, not everything that is written in the Bible that I believe. There are those that okay. I, I don't believe. And in my church, we don't read the whole Bible. There are some stupid things we'll see and we'll say, look, for, look white people want to brainwash us here. We are intellectuals in our church. You see, I am six months old in Nigeria, but currently I am leading the single fastest growing ministry here in Nigeria. And the guys that are coming to this church, these are not, uh, it's not just, you know, people, shaking mama people. These are lawyers. These are people that, love the truth they they, are, they have been wandering in desert they have seen the truth and they have joined the truth 
People say so many things about me. If you go online, you will hear he's a satanist, he's a demonic, he doesn't like Jesus, he's this, he's that, he's this. The more they say, the more people come in number. And when people come and hear the truth, they don't go. The only way to get to God is a personal relationship. When you were born, when you were created by God, he put in everybody what is called conscience. That conscience in you, whether you are educated, uneducated, Muslim, Christian, atheist, no matter who you are, that conscience is inside you. That is the conscience that tells you if you steal, stealing is bad. If you kill, killing is bad. If you fornicate, fornication is bad. That is the link. That is what connects you to God. Nothing else. If you say, I am going to read the Bible and the Bible is going to connect me to God. You are going to be, uh, you are going to be deceived. Bible that we read today, like I've explained to you, speaks so much about forgiveness. God encourages us to forgive no matter the quantity and quality of the sin. But why is it that Satan has not been forgiven? You can keep that question aside and let holy people that are commenting uh, tell us exactly, answer me that question in the comment section. This Bible made, has made African people poor. When you come to church, the man of God is going to preach to you and he will talk about tithe. He will tell you to pay tithe and you pay tithe. This is whether you are rich or whether you are poor. The man of God will say, pay your tithe and you pay tithe because you believe that when you pay your tithe, your tithe goes to God, which is a lie. When I was a baby, I go to church, they say, bring offering to God. So me, I was thinking when we finish giving this offering to God, an angel will come and carry it and take to God. Or someone among the men of God will take it to God. When we pay tithes, religion, this is religion, when we pay tithe, the man of God that we are paying the tithe to, we use that money. I know many men and women of God that even when they come to see me here in Nigeria, they don't come with their wives. They come with their girlfriends. They will have sex. <laughs> with that money, they will pay. That tight. Their girlfriend, not the wife, We eat food. From that money, they will buy condom. That is tight. Tight money. I'm not saying business... They will buy condom and they will use the condom from that tight money. They will, you know, when they finish with what they are doing, they will still use that tight money and give to their girlfriend to go home. And the members that pay this tithe, when they are sick, the man of God will pray for them and will not give them money to go to hospital. This is religion. When the man of God is sick, he will use that tight money they give to him and go to hospital. You see why we don't believe in religion? We believe in personal relationship with God. He can teach us. You see, when you, are, when you decide to know God and invite him into your life and you are serious with it, he will give you a spirit that is going to teach you all things. My brother, yes. that's a hard hit point, and uh, that's a very strong point. That uh, religion, as we are putting it, 
it, it's causing people to live in captivity. There's someone who's working 24 hours a day. There's someone who's not sleeping, working. That, uh, uh, to uh, 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 Prof, Prof X, there is someone who commented here. I think he's one of the born again. His, his name is Nehemiah. He said, God did not forgive Satan because Satan did not ask for forgiveness. So this is, you see this young man here, eh? He is one of the victims of religion. Were you there when this thing was happening? How did you know that Satan did not ask for forgiveness? We need to ask, we need to talk to Satan. There are many things. That's why when people call me Satan, I say, hi, hey, I wish I can see this Satan. You know, so that at least if I ask him questions so that, you know, he can give me answer. How did you know that Satan did not ask for forgiveness? And uh, necessarily, you don't need to forgive people because they ask for forgiveness. It must be an act. When somebody offends you, you must create an atmosphere to forgive that person, whether they ask or they don't ask. If you are waiting for everybody that, for, that offend you to come and ask for forgiveness, then you are not going anywhere because we'll get offended several times. Prof. X, maybe you finish, you are leaving your house, you want to go and, and buy something, and one of the cowboys maybe break your windscreen or do this thing a lot of things happen during the day and do you expect that cobalt to come to your house and say please forgive me maybe they don't know where you stay so forgiveness must just come naturally whether you ask for forgiveness or you do not ask for forgiveness yes please prof let's go ahead do you believe in life after death Like to go to heaven and and come back, or to go to heaven and stay there. To okay, it's in two ways. Okay, let me put it. Let me rephrase it, maybe, so that it does not become too extensive. Do you believe in mm. heaven and hell? That if you die in sin, you go to heaven. You go to hell. If you die righteous, you go to heaven. No, no, no. What's your no, no. What's your idea about heaven and hell? The, the, those things uh, does not exist, unfortunately. But you know, uh, I wouldn't love to how talk do you know more. How do you know they <laughs> <don't> would <laughs> exist? I wouldn't love, love to talk much about that. Uh, the world rotates. I'm going to answer your question in parable. When you go to the bush and you cut a tree and leave it there, the tree is going to die. But give it one year or two years, go back there. That tree will grow again, will start again. That's how life is. Okay, so I'll leave this parable to the viewers to, you know, to assimilate it and understand it further. And when yes. it makes sense to me as well, I'll also mm -hmm. try to put one and two together. So, Mr. Siawan, let's put religion aside. That is the question that I asked yes. earlier. You spoke about yes. conscience. It's one of the best ways to connect with God. Yes. How do we know that what we are doing is right if we do not live by what the scripture said? Because you are saying that there are some things that you believe in that are in the Bible, and there are things that you do not believe in. Why do you make that, uh, you know, distinction? Why do you give yourself the liberty to remove what you don't like and leave what you like, and choose what that's you believe where, in? From that's where your conscience comes in. When it's, it's it's as simple as that. When uh, a a, mm. a man of God come to me. In church and preach, don't don't go for money. Money is the root of all evil. Oh my God, it's very you that like money will go to hell. He finished jumping up and down and speaking all those rubbish, and he used his mouth and open and say, "Offering time, less in time. What are you bringing to offering? It's money. If he doesn't reject it, you use your conscience and say, "This is lie." When a white man come to Africa to preach to me and teach me about love. 
uh, and everybody that is watching this broadcast must go back and read our culture. How did Christianity come to Africa? Our mothers were raped and forced to believe in Christianity. Our fathers were killed and forced to believe in Christianity. They took our culture and forced white culture on us for us to believe in Christianity. Queen Elizabeth was buried a few, few uh, months ago. I know what her parents did to our parents. I mean Queen Elizabeth, the Queen's family. And the most respected scripture, Bible scripture today, is the King James Version of the Bible. I mean, the fashion that the king's family, the queen's family translated, King James. They translated it and it's respected in so many churches today until they read King James. The Bible reading is not enough. The white, white people brought us that King James and they hate us. They don't like us. Up to today, they treat us like monkeys. But they have given us King James first. A wise person must say, ah, this is not right. This person that has denied me an opportunity to know how to produce an airplane, this person that has denied me an opportunity to know how to produce cable wires, cannot give me an opportunity to go to heaven. Then you know that what they brought to us is not taking us anywhere. That's where your question is coming. Uh, Prof. X, Africa, African leaders are so corrupt. I mean, from A to Z, from, what, from all of them, there is no one of them that mean well for the people. They know that we don't have money. We go to them and borrow money. Our politicians, Nigerian politicians, let me say it, or maybe Zambian or Botswana or South Africa or Zimbabwe, they go and borrow money from the white people, those that brought Jesus to us, those that are taking us to heaven, where there is gold and silver. They borrow that, they give that money to us, they give us one billion dollars. They give it to our leaders. When they give it to our leaders, our leaders still have of that money. They don't keep it in Africa. They carry the same money and go to white man's country. White man, the one that loves Africa, we carry that money. Keep it safe for those politicians. Use the same money and do business. Use the same money and build their country. And we are bleeding here in Africa. They love us, but they are aiding our politicians to loot us. They love us, but when our politicians steal from us and go to them, they don't tell our, politi our politicians, take that money back, go and develop your country. Why was Gaddafi killed? They love us. They killed him because he wanted one Africa. There is no African president that will rise in Africa today that means well for the country that will survive. They will kill that person. It happened in, 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 in Tanzania then. But they love us. They want to show us the way to heaven, but they don't like us here on earth. Why not show us the way here on earth? We eat like you. We enjoy like you. Then if we die and see heaven, thank God. If we die, we don't see heaven. We, the one we ate already, will say, thank God we ate before we came here. 
That's where our conscience come in. When a white man come to me, or when somebody come to me and bring me uh, a, a, a holy Bible and preach and preach and preach, after preaching, my conscience tells me what to believe and what not to believe. There are so many things not to believe. And there are so many things to believe. That's where conscience comes in. Even the Bible itself say, I want to quote, speak my Nigerian language. Also, onye nagono, ya tuarifa uche. Meaning, as you are reading the Bible, think about what you are reading. <laughs> Don't just read like a fool. The Bible says, you must fast. Jesus fasted for 24 hours, 7 days. You go and fast. <laughs> you will die. <laughs> Wait. Uh -huh. If the Bible, you know, mm. we all know the a Bible, the Bible is a, it's a historical book. If the uh, Bible came from a black man, could you have believed it? No one will believe it. Even okay. if it came from a black man? If it came from a black man, by now it would have been killed. His family was going to be closed. His lineage was going to be white. Because personally to me, Prof. X, you are, you are a grown-up person. Majority of the people that are watching us, they are grown-up people. When you come and say Jesus was speaking to 5,000 people without a microphone, and all of them were hearing him. If I say it, if I come to my church and say it, people say, ah, lie, false prophet. You can't even manage to speak to 1,000 people without a microphone. <laughs> so th these are the things I'm telling you. If Bible was written by a black person, uh, Africa, will, Africa people would have killed the writer, the author. What's your take on African prophets? Are they really called by God? Are they really doing what they're doing for God? Or they're just serving their best interest? There are so many people in Africa that are called, that have calling. But uh, the Bible itself that you read, that I read, says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You see how, I, how I'm responding to you? I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not hiding anything. People may not agree with me. That's their own cup of tea. Because me, I'm saying the truth. I'm free like this. I, 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 I am a free human being in spirit because I always say the truth. Majority men and women of God know the truth. Prophets in Africa, they know the truth. But they cannot say it. What makes you a prophet is not just coming to prophesy, but you saying the truth. Jesus himself in the scripture that you read was not accepted because he was saying the truth. So we have people in Africa that are called, but they are, they are not saying the truth. Prof. X, when white people come to Africa, I led a team that came from USA to Limpopo during COVID-19. They were looking for leaves in Limpopo. There are leaves, those days of COVID-19, when you are driving uh, going to coming from Johannesburg to Polokwane. When you are reaching Polokwane, before that engine filling station here, you will see young children. They come out with that leaf. I don't know the name of the leaf. It has small, small. This in this is this. They call it a tea. When you drink it, you are pro, you know you have protection. If you are having fever, you know it. It makes you sweat. The fever goes. An African person we open a business and start selling those things as a hub. African people will say, this one is serving ancestral spirit. This one is, is a herbalist. This one is a satanist. This one, they will call all sorts of names. A white person will come get the same leaf because Africa, we don't have the machinery and white people don't want to give us the machinery. They will mash the leaf, make it and make it a chalk. They will bring it to Africa. 
The same person that condemned it when it was in a leaf form, we buy it as paracetamol from the pharmacies and drink it and thank God for the healing. Africa will hate ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so we're not, we're not going to believe. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. I know you are. You, we have limited time here, but uh, yeah. there's a very emotional question I want to ask you. Yes. So I want to ask your opinion about in your arsenal of powers, you know, in your reservoir of the, all the powers that you have. You said you give people powers of prophecy, you give people powers to pull crowds, you give so many different types of powers to different prophets that come to ask for your service. When there's someone like me who is in need of uh, a <laughs> form of help from someone like you who has a supernatural powers, as you claim, and I come with a problem, and my problem is like, I'm looking for a child that has been missing. Do you have any ways to assist me locate that missing child? I have done that several times. The thing about me is that most of my work are openly done. I don't when I when I come to you, when Professor, when I say you are going to have crowd following you, I have. When you look at me, like when we finish this broadcast. You go to prophecy one ministry or prophecy one on my Facebook page, you see the crowd, then you know that this guy is not joking. It's not, I've mm. not done it once. I was in Zambia, I captured Zambia. Zambians are watching, they can, they can, uh, they can uh, comment. I was in South Africa in Limpopo within a short period of time. I dominated crowd. Now I am in Nigeria six months alone, the fastest growing and the largest single congregation here in the state. So these things are evident. It's not because uh, when you go to my Facebook page, people don't even know me in Nigeria. People don't know me in Nigeria. People who actually know me from nigeria they think that i'm a zambian or i am a south african they don't believe that i'm here so the crowd that you see coming are not coming because they know me or they're following me they are coming because of the power that i'm talking about is it prophecy is it political power all of them are there in evidence a black person will condemn it because i'm not real bonk then a bunker will come to Africa and speak and speak and lie, 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 and carry millions and go home. No single industry. The highest thing a white man or woman of God will do for us in Nigeria is to put a Bible school so that they continue colonizing our children through the Bible. But thank God people like us are here to speak to those that are able to listen. It's not a forcing matter, but I am glad that people are beginning to get the message. People are beginning to wake up gradually, gradually. I was in a conference, the African Youth Conference, two months ago. I was addressing the African youth. I, I said to them, instead of fighting to go to heaven, going to church every day being a member of a church why not you join politics because politics will help our community more than religion helps our community that's why i love politics that's why i'm engaged in politics in different nations not just in nigeria because when we are in politics we are able to make good roads for our country for our community for our states when we are in politics for example if i am a governor of this state i am able to do a lot of things those things that cannot come through prayer through my political power i will bring it over i encourage them i'm, I'm not saying stop going to church but on sunday you go to church the rest of the day you work I don't support going to church from Monday. A, any church that you go to three times or four times in a week, that church is part of your problem. That church is 
part of the reason why you are poor. When you come to me on Sunday, say, you see, I want, I want to be rich. I want to be successful. I'm, I'm, I want to start working. I want a job. You bring your file on Sunday. We pray for you. Pa. After we pray for it, on Monday, go and look for a job. You will get a job and you start working and you start having money. When I finish praying for you on Sunday, on Monday you come back at the Bible study. What am I going to teach you on, mon on Monday that I did not teach you on Sunday? On Tuesday you come, healing service. That power of healing that was not available on Sunday, is it on Tuesday that it will be available? On Wednesday, midweek service. Are, are you mad? Use these days to go and work. Because even God that created heaven and earth, first day he worked. Second day he worked. Third day he worked. He was working with his hand. For the, on the seventh day, he rested. And he prayed that day. And he said, remember this day. Keep it holy. If God can work from Monday to Saturday and do church and the rest on Sunday, who are you to work from Monday, to pray from Monday? Why are you even disturbing God? The same prayer you pray on Sunday, on Monday, you come and pray it. On Tuesday, you come and pray it. On Wednesday, you come and pray it. Now, listen. Men of God are becoming rich. The people that we are leading are becoming poor. Why? Because Prof. X, if I say to you, come, come uh, uh, to church on Monday, when you come on Monday, you'll give me offer. Come on Tuesday, when you come on Tuesday, you'll give me offer. Come on Wednesday, when you come on Wednesday, you'll give me offer. Come on Thursday, when you come on Thursday, you'll give me offer. You know, we, when you finish giving that offering, I eat it. I am the one that succeeds. I become rich. My members become poor. I am not against uh, going to church. I am not against uh, doing the work of God. But I'm against doing it foolishly. Anything you overdo is a problem. That's why the Bible says people perish because of lack of of knowledge. Ecclesiastes said there is time for everything. Okay, brother Siawan, there's a child that went missing at a particular church in Nigeria in 2019. And ever since then, the child has been missing. And we've tried all that we can to locate this child to, you know, to get law enforcement involved, but still to no avail. Is there anything you can do with your let the people, with any of let the people involved come to me. I followed uh, this case for long. Prof. X, oh, if so you, you don't know, know about the case, you know about the case. If you don't know, I watch your your program always. Anytime I have opportunity, so I've heard the uh, the, the story of Prof. Uh, uh, say the baby testimony. I do not come and jump into a case because I have power. If you people are serious and you want to test Siawa, like I told the people of Zambia, I am going to tell you that if given a responsibility by those involved, I am going to locate the child so long as the child is alive. And if the child is not alive, I am going to tell you the child is not alive. And I am going to tell you with supernatural power and prophecy. Uh, Prof. X, I have done things before. I mean, I've dealt with things before. This is all over the world. This is not a case. You have my contact. Let the people involved contact me. And we are going to locate the child. That's why I'm called Siawa. It's not the story. <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, 2019. Uh, mm. I just want to, this one is all over people, people, uh, 
people know about it already. So that's why I, I want to say it. I don't want to say the one that people don't know so that people will not say C1 is lying. People don't know C1 because there are people who are watching maybe for the first time, they are seeing C1 for the first time. So they don't know who C1 is. In uh, 2019, uh, I was in, I was in, uh, in uh, South Africa. And uh, the, pres the then president of Zambia was, you know, a very good, a good man. He was a very good man. You know, I benefited a lot from his government, like I always say. But all of a sudden, our relationship got soured. I believe because just like his religion, you know, he created a a ministry, a religious ministry called the National Guidance and the Religious Ministry. And uh, that that ministry was led by one lady who did not believe in what I was doing. She said I was practicing satanism in the country. I didn't believe in Jesus and so many things. But I didn't have time to respond to her. I usually don't respond to these things. But all of a sudden, they deported me from the country for practicing Satanism. And the reason why African people are very stupid is because they believe in what they have not seen. I'm telling you that a woman can divorce her darling husband because a man of God says, if you marry your husband, you miss heaven. No one has ever been to heaven and tell us that heaven is there. If we believe, you know, in what we don't see, you can easily, if even if you go to the comment section, you will see people say, ah, this one, this Satanist, they have never seen Satan before. They have never met Satan before, but they're able to know who a Satanist is. So that's how brainwashed we are in Africa. So this woman managed to convince the president that Sia is a Satanist, and they deported me. And... This is a very powerful, formidable political party in Zambia, PF. Just like in Zimbabwe, PF. Zanu PF. I, Zanu PF. And when they deported me, you know, everything, I was okay. I, I, I mean, my life, I don't take anything serious. I, I, I know that I will still grow because I believe in what I do. So I started my work in a, in a South Africa. One day, I woke up and told them that this is your last time being in power. <laughs> when I said it, they laughed because they know they knew me, but they didn't understand me properly. I told them that the, the eight president, the current president now will be the president of Zambia. If you follow the history of Zambia, you will know that it is practically impossible for a Tonga man to be a president there because he lost five good times. And in the meeting that I had with PF people, when I was friends with them, they said a Tonga person will never be a president in Zambia, no matter what. I told them that HH will be the president. Yeah, the guy said it. You come and see insult. Ha! I'm the man satanist. Hmm, stupid boy. What? The? They called me the minister, make press briefing. I think... The ministers every day see a one day, see a one that I kept quiet. I told them that if HX doesn't win election, I am going to stop coming and preach. You will never see me again. My brother, PF went as far as to Malawi. To engage by the time when we started now fighting spiritual battle, they discovered that the prayer they were doing was not working. And because I told them, even if Jesus Christ come and vote for you, you are going. They went to Malawi and brought serious witch doctors. A lot of things happened. But at the end of the day, 
we fought, they lost. I mean, they were mighty. These guys were mighty. They, it was a grassroots part. Ask any of them, how did you lose the election? If they explain to you, they know that I'm lying. No one, no one today know how that election was last. So all what? this was because of the Jagaban. All this was because of Siawan. Of course, I worked a lot. What I'm trying to say is that these are part of the work that we did. And the reason why I say this one is because it's open. Everyone is able to see it. Even if you go to Google, go to YouTube, you see see one fight with Zambian government and so on. You Google, you see everything. It's open. That's why I say this one. I don't speak about my work. Getting, re, re, discovering where uh, baby testimony is prophetical is my job. And I can do it. Look, a lot of people are watching this broadcast. Those who don't know Siawan are the only those that will doubt. But those that know Siawan will know that. Arrange, uh, arrange the, the meeting for me and the owners of the testament and give me 14 days. If I don't get him, then know that I'm a first prophet. Okay, when you say you want a meeting with the parents or with the parent of baby testimony, you mean a physical meeting, a one-on-one -on -one interaction? Yes, a physical I'm in Nigeria. They are, they are in Nigeria as well. I'm, I'm in a physical meeting. We need to sit and we need to talk. There is a lot of things. I know I've heard the name of uh, Prophet Jeremiah mentioned. There is a lot of things that we need to talk. And we proceed and, and sort the... the the case out. So once you meet the mother, you only need two weeks to locate baby testimony. It may not even be up to two weeks. I am the don of power. It's me. I am the don of power. We are not two on earth. How do it? Do you have? To, do you need to meet Jeremiah Omoto as well? No, I, I don't. I don't need to meet him to do this work. He is not the parent or the father of the child. So long as the parents have said to me, see your one, proceed. We, <laughs> uh, anyway, if you are, you want me to get him, you have my number for fix. I'm also going to send you my private number in case the public one is busy. Arrange a meeting. We'll come and sort it out. Here in this broadcast, if you find the baby alive, they will bring the baby also for you to see. And people will know. Many people know. The only people who don't know are people that are watching C1 for the first time today. How much do I need to pay for that to happen? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't want to talk about that. We have not uh, we have not uh, <laughs> we have not reached that side. You may not pay anything, so <laughs> I want to ask a question. Let's say in your in your doing, you find you find out. I know you're a very brave man and you're a very courageous and radical one. If you do find out that Prophet Jeremiah is the one behind it, are you going to bring that information out or for the sake of a relationship with him, you will conceal it. Or you are not I there to expose who's behind you. You are just there to I find the child. I don't uh, value relationship above people. I, I'm from telling you now that uh, we had good relationship with the former president of Zambia, the Galungi. But I fought him. I missed him. If uh, in the process of us doing our spiritual investigation, we find that the prophet or anybody is involved, we, I mean, we have brought down people. The president of Guyana, the former president of Guyana, today, I am the one that pulled him up from where he was and brought him down. We don't talk about all those things.
Eddie Galungi is there with you in Southern Africa, in Zambia. He will, he will tell you this. How many of them am I going to mention? There are so many. Once it comes, it borders with life. Seven people, an African child, we go a strong man. So if you find anything, and if you find any single thing that is not in line with what's supposed to be done, we are going to fight and we are going to win the battle because we have never lost before. I know you told me that you are rushing for a meeting and I don't want to extend my time, but are you open for maybe three calls or four calls because my people are going to have a problem with me here if I do not open the line for calling for them to ask one or two questions. Is your meeting scheduled? Are you ready? Are you supposed to be in a meeting already by now? Yes, I'm supposed to be. Prof. X, I am going to... I, I see that many people are interested in knowing and in what we are discussing. Schedule me again for Friday and I will come strictly to take phone calls and respond to people. Now I have to go and uh, meet people that have come from all over the world to meet Siawan. Professor Siawan, thank you for honoring this invite. We will talk privately, and uh, you, are, you, are, you are already booked. No need for confirmation for Friday. Friday, you'll be back here, and you're going to be engaging uh, with our people. We still have a lot to talk about. We still have a lot of things you know, to discuss and uh, enlighten our people and fight for a good cause, defend humanity, and stand for justice. I appreciate you, my brother, for coming through for this engagement. You have a blessed day and uh, a fruitful meeting. Thank you so much. God bless. Do you have last words, perhaps, or is it done? No, it's done. God bless. I've spoken enough for today. Okay, brother. Stay safe. Goodbye for now. Greetings, my people. It's Mr. Pull the Trigger. Yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So tell me what you think. I'm going to open the calling in line. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you, you know, what you got from this interaction. Tell me what uh, your two senses about it. I know people will say, why would you invite people like C1? Why would you invite people like uh, Ijofo? Listen, my people. The ends will justify the means. If you are not open-minded, if you want to be too spiritual, this is the wrong platform for you. This is called the Enlightenment Series. So I want you to divorce yourself from tradition. And I want you to start becoming logical thinkers. I want you to become free spirits. I want you to start looking at things, questioning things, examining things, and challenging some certain traditions that were instilled upon us by religion. Not just religion. We are here today because of religion. We are suffering the consequences of religion. So I'm going to open the calling in line. I want you to tell, I'm not going to take many calls because I don't want this broadcast to be too long. I'll take as few calls as possible, probably just three or four or five. And then we wrap up and wait for the next episode of the Enlightenment series. So if you have any additions of your own, anything that you want to bring forth to this conversation feel free to call in now and let's entertain you and let's interact with you let's hear what you have to say before we, we wrap up because i'm trying to avoid you know the duration of this broadcast so that we remain confined to the subject we remain confined to the discussion this guy said a lot of things most of which i do not agree with and some of which are very factual some of which is making a lot of sense but it's not something that will be easily accepted by a traditional mind by a mind that is convinced itself that this is the truth you never know the truth until you examine or get the primary source of that truth so with that being said i can see people are already calling i do not know if there are any there is any need for an engagement or we just wait and do another interactive program whereby we engage and map up the way forward. Let me just take one or two and then we call it quits. I greet you, caller. You can go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Prof. X. Yes, brother. Talk to um, me. The CR1s 
the sea hour spoke amazingly well. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of religion is something Africans shy away from. They don't want to discuss it because they are brainwashed. And it's the most important topic to discuss in Africa. Mm -hmm. Siawan sounds like one of my students, but with what he was saying, he looks like uh, he started before me. But um, he's, uh, he's a man of wisdom. Uh, I've scrutinized him with my own onyokomita. Mm. And it uh, comes to the, the case of um, maybe testimony. If anybody, being it, even the Satan, comes out say, I'm, I'm going to locate uh, the baby testimony, he should be given the opportunity. If he needs logistics, yeah, the logistics should be provided since he gave a deadline. Mm. If anybody who genuinely loves to see the baby testimony back and united with his parents should support that move. Uh, we've not had too many options. If our one option comes out, why would we? Yeah, at least it's a challenge on him to verify his uh, sources and we don't care how he comes. If he comes as a spirit human, we'll take him back. It's baby testimony, isn't it? And secondly, uh, people tend to proportion God. And this man has not proportioned God. You can't say God is a man or a woman. And mm -hmm. our people need to begin to um, uh, remove that perception, that misconception of God, which the Berlin Conference uh, brought to us. People ravaged our environment, take all our hidden treasures, and yet we are we are glorifying them in the name of uh, Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't want to take much time. But I think CR1, with what he has said, I've looked at his fundamental basis of faith. I, I, I've, I've, been spoke, I've, I've been speaking like him for, for decades, and uh, I can relate with uh, his spirit. So if you, we can give him a try. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for the call. Let me take another one. That was CR1 for you. Tell me what you think. Hello, caller. You can go ahead. Prophet, how are you? I greet you. Yes. Uh, let's challenge uh, CR1, uh, uh, Prophet. Because mm -hmm. I, I know him. I'm from Zambia. And this guy, you know wh what we can do. Let's use him so that at the end of the day, uh, uh, he'll be able to destroy the camp of the enemy. Because I know one thing of, of CR1. He has got boldness, that man. So whatever, uh, 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 if if he's, he's saying that he has got power and he will challenge those people, let's use the, uh, this man. Because one thing I know that this guy has got boldness, this guy, mm. and he does not fear anyone. So I think let's 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 uh, take this step. Thank you so much. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. Some people are saying, let's use him. Let's let's do this. Let's do that. His reputation is on the line. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Hello, caller. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, Professor. Talk to me. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this uh, program, I'm very, very happy about this program and the way things are going. By God's grace, uh, we'll find baby testimony. At this point, we don't need to say that this one is good, this one is not good. We always, let's give a try. You know, mm -hmm. I'm seeing the comments. Some people are saying that he's, he's working for Jeremiah, he's doing this, he's doing that. Let's not bring this one yet. Let's just give a try and see. We can't say this word is coming from, this word is coming from. We are putting hand in any way we can lay our hand on so that all our effort is to or find a baby testimony. That's all everybody is working for. And uh, I thank you for, since you start this uh, live video and you are inviting people, we are getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. At least we are getting uh, uh, a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. By the time we put them together, I believe a result will come out. And with uh, Africa, you know, there is a thing that, uh, you know, this religion of a thing, it has gone into our head and people don't know the difference between faith and religion you know mm. if if you are born into a muslim some people that go to church in africa today is because they are born into a christian home mm. 
if they are born into a, a Muslim home, they will be a Muslim today. And yeah. those people that are born into a Muslim home, if they are born into a Christian home today, they will be a Christian. Most of us, we don't even, we can't even differentiate what is faith and religion. And that's what is holding us back in Africa. Mm, your two minutes is up, Kola. Thank you for your contributions. Okay. So what I will say, what the only thing I will contribute is that let's give this guy a try and other people a try. Let's put our hands in any way we can lay our hands to. The most important thing is to find baby testimony. Thank you very much for your work. Okay. Thank you, brother. God bless you. My people, even if there's a Sangoma, a native doctor out there, that can help us locate baby testimony. I'll go and consult that Sangoma. That's how serious it is. If you want to be spiritual, it's fine. Be spiritual. But if the ends justify the means, let it be. That boy needs to be reunited with the family at whatever cost, through whatever way. Go ahead, caller. Hello, Profix. I greet you. How are you? I'm good. This is Lamek from Zambia. Brother Lamek, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm good, bro. Talk to me. Uh, yes, about Sia One, I think let us give him time. According to what I know about him, mm -hmm. I think he, he can do the job. You think he, he can, can do, do the, the job? job because yes, according to what he did for us here in Zambia, because we didn't believe him when he was saying, he was saying no, this former government was going to come out of power. Because mm -hmm. the government was too powerful for us like to remove it but he managed that i think he managed to convince everyone to vote for the government which is now in power and i believe that we see one can do the job let mm. us give him the chance he is and i i don't believe he's coming from from jeremiah or moto what let us just give him a chance because i don't think he the way i know him i don't think he is a man who can be associated with jeremiah or moto Mm. According to how I know him, I know he can do the uh, he can do the job. He can do the job, but what I don't know is where he found he, he find the powers he used to to do whatever he does. But he, what I know is that he can do what well, whichever way he, he does his things, the job he can do it. Mm. I'm talking from Zambia here. You're talking from experience. Uh, you have experienced this work. Yes. Mm. I've got experience because he, even the time when he came out to say to tell those government the, the former government because he, he did a lot of work in in, that, in secret with the, the former government. But there was a time when he came out to say, No, I need my powers. I need my powers back and I've, I've, I've given you one week to bring back my powers. If you don't bring back my powers, everyone is going to die. And these people they shivered. We could even see that okay, they had something for him. Mm. They shivered. Then after one week, he came on live to say, no, they brought my powers. Those who had my powers, they brought it. And from now, I'm telling you that this government is finished. Because they no longer have my powers they have been using to, to deceive people. Yeah. And we saw what happened last last year. They, the government, and for sure, they don't know. If you ask the, the former government, you ask them, how did they, they came out of power? No one will explain, like, yeah, what happened? What went wrong? Because we did everything to our level best to our, for us to stay in power, to remain in power, but we came out. Mm. So me, I, be, I believe in Siawan. He can do it. Let us just give him a chance because there's nothing he can do to, to Ruth. He can't do anything to Ruth. Let us just do give him a chance to do the job. Yeah, but me, myself, I don't think he can take that challenge if he does not know his story. If he knows yes. his reputation is on the line, and he, if he knows the significance of this case. Yes. He knows this case is big. He can't do anything to Ruth. Let mm. us just give him a chance to do the job. Because if he does anything to Ruth, we know where to find this here one. <laughs> Man, yeah. Thank you, Kola. Let me can't. take another Kola. Thanks for your contribution. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Uh, Brother Lamek here believes that uh, we should uh, allow Sia One to do his thing. We should give him a platform to demonstrate what he can. Hello, caller. Reduce the volume in the background, please, or pause it and go ahead with your contributions. Yes. Hello. I'm calling from Norway. 
talk to me. You are doing great. Yes, you are doing great job. Let us give Sia one chance to find baby testimony. Mm. Because uh, it has been long and everyone is waiting uh, to see baby testimony as now, as now, as tomorrow, as tomorrow. So if uh, possible, no matter how uh, which name they call Sia one, let them call him whatever. But we want to see we want to see baby testimony. Mm. So for me, I think we give him a chance now and now. Please don't even go on Friday. Let us give him time now. Mm. All right, my sister. Thank you so much. We'll give him a shot yeah. and see what you come out with. Yeah, he will do it. Hmm. I believe in him and I believe in his uh, power. <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, it is, it is wrong, my sister. We'll give him a shot. Yes, yes, proof. And I, I love your job. Continue doing it. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> All right. God bless you. God bless you. Let's take another caller, another caller from another nation, from another state. So what's your take, my people? This is Aiki Waras. Aiki Waras, you can go ahead. Yeah, this is Brothers in the house. Uh, Prof. S, thank you for, for bringing this man. Um, you see, the most uh, amazing thing is that uh, he was able to tell the, the church goers, no, there is, there is good, it is always good for us to go to church, no doubt. But he was able to tell the, the church goers, those that contribute, their, their, they had the money to their pastors, to know that the money they are paying to those people, they are using to, to pay to women, they are, they are not fit. Outside the people in the church. That is my, my, my four points. And again, he cannot, I believe someone that he cannot put his uh, integrity in the line. But telling us that, uh, he, uh, he, that the root should come to, to him with the family and all that, to test his, his ability. It, is, it will be good for us to, to, to give him a chance. Mm. Okay? And he was also able to donate to them that he doesn't tell you, don't do not go to church, no. You don't condemn going to church. He was very, very vocal in that, in, that, uh, in, that, in that area. That you can go to church, but be mindful of what you do for your own self. Because it's, it's very, very obvious that someone that, that killed your father, your great-grandfathers, and your grandfather cannot, cannot wish you anything good. The Western, they come here, they enslaved our fathers, our forefathers and everything. They took away all our gold, all our, our natural resources. I went back to the to the to the to the continent and still introduced to us visa that we must go back through all those uh, procedures, all those uh, procedures, sorry, all those procedures for us before we can go to to, uh, to to Europe and all that. At the end of the day, they still come back again to tell us Bible and church and Christianity after struggling and they're using our forefathers like slaves and using our fathers to to develop their, their, their areas. They can never love us. So if we are going to church, we have to go to church with double with double sense. Think if we, what what is 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 is it real or not? Because if heaven really exists, all these mansions on earth will not be there. Yes. If hellfire really exists, these people that kill our forefathers will be the ones to wish us that hellfire. Mm. Okay? Yes. It's very very clear. So let's, let's be mindful of whom we are allowed to convince us in, in this kind of religion. I'm a Christian, no doubt. But for me to believe what a white man say, because I've dealt with a lot of them, and even if you talk about the, the I've, I've, I've met a lot of them, no doubt. And the, the way we relate in this traditional religion is quite different from, from what I, I do see in, in Nigeria and in, in Africa. Okay? Mm. Yes, Aiki so, You have exhausted your time, okay, brother, you brother Aiki. Thank you for the thank call. You thank you. God bless you. You're welcome. Harry Idehen said, Prophets, you never give up your legend. My people, giving up is not an option. There's a child that is missing here. Even if we want to give up, even if we say we want to give up, then what's going to happen to baby testimony? Who's going to raise up to stand for baby testimony? Who's going to rise up to stand for baby testimony? Who's going to ensure his justice? Who's going to ensure his release? I always say this to people, that I'm the worst person that would ever want to be, to go against. If you see me in a cage locked up with a lion come and save the lion because i'll repeat apart i will not rest until i'm victorious i'm determined i'm consistent hello caller you can go ahead hello professor i greet you my brother i greet you my brother um the only thing i want to 
contribute this. There's nothing to be too spiritual about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? We should know enemies we have. It be, so of course some people post, some people some people have got powers. It doesn't mean they got it from God. You understand? Mm -hmm. If he's going to now his reputation is at stake. You understand? So he he will try every possible means to you know to prove himself, you know, to make himself, you know, relevant to his followers. Mm. So so at the end of the day, I think he, you know, we should give him a try. Of course you are a smart man, you always know what to do. You mm. always know how to follow people up. No, thank you so much, brother. All right, my brother. Okay, so Griffin Griffin says, yeah, prophets will dine with the devil to find baby Desmond. I'm telling you, if Lucifer comes down today and he gives me ideas that he knows where baby testimony is, I will sit with him. I'll even hug him if I have to. I'll pet him on the back. I'll sweet talk him. Hey, Lucy. I'll even call him Lucy, not Lucifer. Talk, talk to me. What do you know? I'll even take him out for a drink if I have to until he reveals where baby testimony is. That's how special baby testimony is, my people. Uh, look, I dined with the likes of Doris Ogala. I've dined with Jezebels, with all the natures of people that you can think of. I'm ready for this, my people. And I'm not stopping until this, bo <laughs> this boy is found. Some will say, no, you're only doing this on social media. You'll see how powerful this tool called social media is super powerful rina dorias is back in the house and whenever rina dorias shows up we all know that she starts throwing some offering in the offering basket thank you rina dorias thank you for your blessing thank you for your contribution thank you for your seed <laughs> my special partner rina dorias i love you thank you so much hello caller you can go ahead hello professor greetings to you greetings to you yeah, my dear brother, I just want to appreciate you for what you have been doing. It's long I've been watching your program, and I'm very happy because you have opened the eyes of so many people. So I have one thing to tell our viewers, and I also have one question for Siaman. What I want to say is, um, even uh, in the Bible, Jesus said that uh, in the time of John the Baptist, he did not drink any wine, and he fasted. People said he was a bad man. It's not possible for a normal human being to live like that. And when Jesus came, he drank wine and he died with um, tax collectors and thieves. And people said, how can the Messiah live like this? And then for Siaman, I have a question for him. Why do Siaman need the family of Matthew and the, fam the, the father and the mother for him to, 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 to testify where the, the, the testimony is? If he really has the power of God, he is really ordained by, by God Almighty, if he's a prophet of God. He should see what God has shown him and explain to the world as all. Well, because we really need to the testimony. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you once more for what you have been doing. Thank you, Kola. God bless you. I have eyes in my mouth. So don't mind what I'll be saying. Hello, Kola. You can go ahead. Yes, this is a prophet FC Joshua Chewe, sir, from this, Zambia. This is what? A prophet FC Joshua. I I Zambia. using I using earphones. Uh, yes, let me remove. Oh, okay, so it's fine. You, you can go ahead, prophet. Yes, this is Okay. Um, I think Prophet X has been following you ever since you started this case, and uh, ever uh, from the time you were arrested on some propaganda. But uh, thank you so much. I think to come in a place of agreement uh, because you are too you are too consistent concerning the issues of humanity and justice. I think this time around, thank you so much that you have given a platform for, for my brother Siawa. I know him from Zambia way back when he just came in Zambia. Mm. So please, Siawa has taken, he has taken a step and he has come out so boldly. And I know Siawa is watching this. And, and please give him a chance. 
and he need to see baby testimony. And whoever is involved in the kidnapping of this baby testimony, we want them to be, we want them to be on public. We want we want people to see enough is enough. So many issues have been happening in the body of Christ. How people are not how people are still learning from the poor. I think enough is enough. Thank you so much, my brother, for the good work you are doing. We, once again, Prophet F. C. Joshua is my name. I agree. Thank you, my brother, for the call. Uh, okay, the question that people are asking is, why does Sia one need to be in physical contact? Or why does he need one-on-one -on -one with the sister Ruth Matthew? I think tomorrow when he comes back, we'll ask him that question. I greet you, caller. You can go ahead. Yeah, hello? I greet you. You can go ahead. Yeah, Prophet. Yeah, I've been following your program for a very, very long time now, and I really, really appreciate what you're doing. You have opened the eyes of so many people out there, people who have been blind, who have been taken advantage of by this uh, fake man of God. And uh, I really, I'm really so overwhelmed with what you're doing. So, what I want, to, the point I want to make is this about this uh, uh, fake prophecy and all this uh, what is happening particularly in nigeria mm -hmm. uh, what i've noticed about nigerians they are very very good people and they are people who are they are too deeply spiritual and that is why they they easily fall prey into this in the hands of men men of god who 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 have taken their weaknesses for granted so I just want to make a point about people. This how to identify these fake pastors and prophets, because from to my own to my opinion to my opinion, let me put, let me put it this way. I don't know why. If you look at the life of Christ, Christ was uh, Jesus Christ. He lived a simple life. He lived, he lived an exemplary life. He wasn't showing off. He just, he was just out to. He was, he, he, he went out, did his miracles, helped people, helped make the blind to see. But you didn't see him living luxuriously. He, you didn't see him showing his where he lives and showing his uh, proper his uh, properties. He, he didn't care about all those things. So, particularly in Nigeria and. Uh, my brother, era, my brother, era. I'm sorry to say this, but your yeah. two minutes is up. We are very time conscious here, in as much as people have to air their contributions. It's strictly two minutes okay. and nothing beyond. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, thank you. I got it. Okay, thank just you. give me just a, let me round up. Let me let me just round up what I'm saying. Can you round up in 30 so seconds? I just Okay, okay. So uh about baby testimony, we just we just have to put our 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 ideas together, and we'll keep supporting you to see to see that we get to achieve what we are we are we are we are, we are looking up to. So just thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. More grace, my brother. God yeah. bless you. Yeah. yeah. God bless. You. Thank you. Okay, so it's two minutes, my people. Try by all means to round up everything you have to say in two minutes so that the conversation can become a little bit shorter, so that we allow so many people to contribute. Hello, caller, you can go ahead. You have two minutes. A PDT. I greet you. Yes, to be reality. If uh, the guy is using any power, what we are interested in is to show or prove where the baby testimony is. That's all. And again, uh, for the meeting of uh, Ruth Matthew, why not video meet him? No need to meet him as long as he has the powers. I think that is okay. Oh, and I give you some, I give you support for all the things you are doing. May you remain great. Okay. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. Okay. Have a nice. So many people are questioning, are asking, why can't this happen virtually without them having to meet one on one? Hello, caller. You can go ahead. Hello, Prophet. I greet you. My utmost respect for you, brother. 
Thank you, brother. All right. My contribution is very simple and quick. If it takes the likes of Sia one to expose fakes like prophets or Jeremiah, I do not want to call him a prophet, and his likes, so be it. Mm. There is no way to sugarcoat the demonic acts of these so-called prophets. It is time to fight evil with any means available. So long as justice is served, then I will be very happy. Mm. It is becoming too much. It is becoming unbecoming. These people have so much grown wings to the fact that they do so much evil to the people of Nigeria, to the face of the people, and they expect no fight back. But their judgment is near. And if it takes a CR1 to expose them, so be it. Mm. No, please, spot on. We, need, we need to do it as soon as possible. There is no time to waste time. No time to check time. Mm. If he needs the parents of testimony to see him, please make the arrangement as soon as tomorrow so he can commence and so the truth comes out and these evil men are, they are exposed. And after that, we will need him to also expose other things. Mm. No, you are spot so on, my brother. Time is of essence. We have to try to make a move as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah. All right, man. Bless up, bro. Bless you, brother. So my people are still on that note that uh, this needs to be done as soon as possible at the earliest available opportunity. I greet you, brother. Mr. Pool, the trigger. Good afternoon, brother. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful, my brother. How are you doing? Oh, that's great. I'm doing this, you know, uh, wonderful too. And uh, I'm at work uh, watching your program live. Mm. And uh, I, I had a lot of phone calls coming in from a lot of brothers all part of the world, and a lot of sisters too. We got different opinions and ideas. Yeah, can you speak up uh, a little bit, brother? I'm struggling to hear you. All right. All right, all right. I said I'm listening to everybody, brothers and sisters all over the world, you know, calling you into, into your programs with different ideas and opinions. But uh, I don't know, still long on your mind. I would like you to give that brother first who said uh, he can find baby testimony. I want you to give him a chance. Uh, before I could, you know, could, could drop a line, I want to remind everybody here on this platform, listening and watching and calling that we are Africans. Before the coming on of uh, the two uh, religious uh, uh, concepts that we are dealing with today in Africa, the Christian and the Islam, we have already our spirit, we are conscious of our spirituality. That is in everything we can have our spirit to achieve whatever we want to achieve as an African. I remember an incident or an accident in my kingdom some couple of years back. Then I was not even born. It is, you know, it is uh, it's a kind of, it's a part of our history. And they, they do make songs and you know on the uh, uh, songs with him, music with him. A man was murdered in the forest, a dog down that nobody ever found him. They looked for him for one month, nobody could find him. And with the help of those people they call witch doctor or devil, whatsoever the Christians they call them. He came, they approached him, they never even paid him a money, just a cola note, two cola notes, and his staff of office. He went straight to where the dead, where the man was killed and where he was buried. He was assumed, and the police arrested everybody you know who who was involved in such you know, a crime. What I'm trying to say is this: when we are trying to let us try to differentiate reality from uh, from uh, from fiction, we're looking for baby testimony. That's a human, a little child who cannot you know protect or defend herself or itself as the case may be, but I will appreciate and I would like all my brothers to please shift and go away with the concept of Jesus who lived some years ago, who lived thousands of kilometers away from Africa, who went to drink beer with people who was not uh, Christians, who went to Dida, who went to Dida. Africans were strong with you people. This brother just gave an example some couple of hours ago that Jesus spoke with 5,000 people without the help of a man. How can that be possible? 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't dumb these people all. In such a test of baby testimony, to me, I don't even want to hear the concept of Jesus or God anymore here. We need to face reality. Come on, Africans. Thank mm. you, Prof. East. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for your contributions. Uh, people now are calling with mixed emotions. You know, this case, this case really, it, uh, it makes people emotional. And uh, it causes people to, you know, to cast different aspirations. Hello, Cole, I greet you. Go ahead. Yeah, hello, Prophet. I greet you, brother. Yeah, this is diligent calling from Japan. Mm, talk to me, my brother. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I came late, but I didn't listen everything this guy said. But I, I was just, don't, don't, excuse me, I don't, this guy's in Zambia, right? He's in Nigeria. Okay, he's in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just one, because I know this guy has been following this story. And he knows about the baby test, baby testimony, and he maybe he knows about Lungu. He knows about Professor Lungu, even because I have heard somebody telling us about Zambia. That's number one. That's number two. You know, Prophet Jeremiah is looking to a means to to release this kid, but there's no means. Maybe, maybe. He sees this guy is coming up. He can still use this guy. He can still use this guy because this guy know the whole story about the testimony. Yes, he can still use this guy for any means, by money or by prophetic means or by any means like a colleague to still bring up the testimony. But what we need is baby testimony. That's just my point because I believe this guy knows everything that is going on. But now the thing is on the table. One, one caller said he can use this thing to convince people. He can use this thing to get friends. Yes, you know. But, but my point, bringing, if he's, he's a real man of God, to bring a root in front of him before he brings out the baby testimony. But I don't trust that one. If he has a means to bring up baby testimony, let him bring up baby testimony. But bringing root before he brings out the baby testimony, I don't see that one to be like. You know, anything. That's just my point. Yes. All right, brother. Thank you, you so much for your contribution. Yeah. Okay. People are mostly concerned about the idea of uh, Sister Ruth Matthew having to meet uh, with the brother one on one, uh, but we do not know. Maybe that's how CR one works. But he's going to come back again uh, on Friday. We will ask those questions. He is coming specifically to address and answer calls and answer questions. Hello, caller. You can go ahead. Hello. Good evening. I greet you. Talk to me. Yeah, uh, Prof. Uh, Prof X, you've been doing so well on this um, baby testimonies issue. Um, this is idyllic. Um, just for uh, record's sake, I'll say we shouldn't be talking about bringing um, baby testimonies mother out before any prophecy or any way to bring out um, baby testimonies um, story out or anything. All I, all we all need is um, basically uh, finding a way, be it from devil himself, be it from God himself, let's just get baby testimonies uh, story out, whether if, the, if it's a prophecy, if it's Juju, if it's Oracle, if it's from you, anyone at all, we should just get baby testimony out, because it's been a while, it's over two years plus since uh, he got missing, and for now, we should be talking about who and how, but it is, um, how can we get him, wherever it comes from, if it's from the um, law enforcement agency, if it's, if it's dumped anywhere, we don't care again, all we need is baby testimony is released in any way, be, be it alive or dead, we need to just know the end of this whole case. That's all my, that's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. So my brother here is saying that we don't care which way that we use, which channel, who involved, who's what. The only thing we want is baby testimony. Nothing else but baby testimony. So even if a Juju man comes and say they know where baby testimony is, they are welcome to give us their contribution. They are welcome to tell us what they can see or what they can hear. So he's speaking in light of uh, CR1 that anyone that can do this, let them do it. And as to why they should meet with Sister Ruth Matthew, why CR1 and Sister Ruth Matthew should meet, 
we are going to find out when we bring CR1 back again on Friday why there has to be a meeting you know, in person for them, for him to carry out the search. Hello, call. I can see there are so many calls from you. You can go ahead. Hello? Yes, caller, you can go ahead. Okay, yeah, Prophet. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for this one. The people, they are our problem. All these prophets, because, see, these people, they don't believe in God. You understand me? And if you take all these prophets, all these uh, 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 idol worshippers, they are the reason why that we have fake pastors and fake apostles today. Because if you take the evil out of the man, if you take evil out of the society, people will act right. So you cannot be an idol worshipper and you are saying, you understand me, that there is anything good that can come out of it. Mm. I don't, know, I, I, I don't know if you understand me. The reason why there are fake pastors, fake prophets today, it is because of people like this that are idol worshippers. Because at the end of the day, these pastors, these people that have opened church, if maybe there are uh, no people that are coming for the church, they bounce back to these people. You understand me? So these people now empower them. By the time they empower them, tomorrow they will come out and start acting magic and say it is miracle. So for me, I think this, the, the, the idol worshippers, they, 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 that they are saying that that is our ancestral worship is the lie. It's a very big lie. Those are the people that are the major problem of Nigeria, Africa. See, Professor, hmm? if you check out the countries that are described as third world countries, they are predominantly idol worshippers. And the day any a country or anybody turns his back against God, hmm? God will allow enemies to plunder their land. The countries that are today referred to as uh, Western, they used to be the uh, Roman Empire. All Portugal, France, Germany, Italy, UK, and, and Russia, so, and so many other European countries, they used to be one. You understand me? And these are the people that understand that God exists. They held tight to God. And that is why it is, and that is why they are the way they are today. You understand me? But we, we have embraced idol worship. Oh, thank you, Paul. Your is two minutes is up, my is God Thank you for your contributions. Hello? Your two minutes is up. Thank you for your contributions. Okay. But I would love to have another time. I sent you a message. So sometimes I could come online on earth. I don't okay, know about I'll that. send you a link. When I'm having a religious debate, uh, we or like we always yeah, do. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. You see, these people, they I'll are the major problem. I'm not even the pastors. Me. Yes, please do. All right, brother. Thank you. Let's take uh, three more calls. We are knocking out at exactly two hours. We are already left with about three minutes now. Hello, caller. You can go ahead. Hello, Mr. PDT. I greet you. I, I call you the trigger puller. <laughs> How are you doing today? I did try. I, I did try, my brother. I did try. <laughs> not so, not so, not so. Mm. Uh, that guy, that uh, CR1 that called, mm. uh, I didn't start the program from the beginning, but I, I hear clearly where he said that give him 14 days that he's going to find baby testimony. He's going to tell where he is. Please. I know you are a very intelligent and very wisdom person. You are so wise. Mm. So know how you're gonna do it, but don't allow him to meet one on one with Ruth, please. Mm. That's what I want to contribute. Please. Okay. 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 Yes. What Thank could you be the reason? Much. Okay. What are your fears? What's the worst that can happen? Maybe? Okay. My fear. My fear. Is, my fear is that him meeting his, uh, uh, sister Ruth met you. Like, I don't see any reason why he will meet him because if he knows where baby testimony is or his uh, angel or God or whoever that is speaking to him, tell where baby testimony is, he has to go there without even saying that you have to, you have to consult someone before he will go. No, so, I don't know if you get what I mean. There's mm -hmm. no need of consulting since Sister Ruth met you before going to find give us baby testimony if he knows where he is. is I it? never heard about him. I never, I don't know him, but this is the first time I'm hearing about him. But whatever he can do to get baby testimony, let him do it. 
the only person we want is baby testimony that's all okay. we are speaking to patrick from pretoria yeah. just join in again on friday i'll be having him again on friday so that he can explain to us what, time? what is the significance what time? uh you see my times are not are not normally announced but if you click the notification icon on any platform no, you are my watching notification icon, my notification icon is always on is i'm following you long time ago is long it? long time ago you don't I'm get the one that yesterday that saw you something Oh, I'm you're the one who saw me in that team, but you refuse to tell me where you, you refuse to tell me where you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'll 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 be all yours tomorrow. Don't worry. Okay, I'm I there. think I think I'll make okay. an update then. I'll, I'll I'll put a post out there to uh, you know inform people of the time when you'll be coming through. No problem. No problem. All right. Thank you, my brother. No Stay safe. Ciao, bye. Uh, let's take about two more calls my people you know i need to i need to rush and do something Paula, can you pause the one you're watching please hello professor yes Paula, you can go ahead thank you for all that you're doing we really appreciate you I appreciate uh, you. Uh there was one uh, yeah there was one caller that, that was talking about um him exposing Jeremiah and the other I'll I'll support him to do that. Let's really know because I was hearing him when I came in that he saw uh oh yes, uh, anointing oh yeah, different things to different persons. He can go ahead and mention their names. Let's know them. Mm. Let's know them and know and know. The, the real pastors that are really pastors in Nigeria, not just a lot of fake pastors everywhere. Let him mention their name so that we we'll know what, what we are doing. Mm. Look at elections, election is coming in you know, on. They are all seeking for favor, looking for how to, how, how to penetrate to the politicians so that they can get something from them. When, when immediately, immediately start mentioning their name, they will all start running backwards. Let's know, let's pick the right person to rule Nigeria. No, they're coming up, making uh, for prayer, praying all sorts of things, doing all sorts of things for them to like get favor from this politician. You should go ahead and mention their name. That's what we want. Thank you. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you. God bless you, my brother. Stay safe. Yeah. This brother wants to know the names. He, he wants to see, I want to mention all the names of people that he has given power. <laughs> I greet you, caller. You have two minutes. Please go ahead. Thank you, Professor. Yes, I really appreciate your effort. Thank you, brother. I, I don't know what is wrong with our people. Uh, I didn't see anything wrong. See, see one asking for the, the parents of the missing child. Mm -hmm. Maybe on my own, he may be asking for that, for him to verify exactly before he commence his investigation or whatever. Yes. But he wants to put his, the parents closer to ask to be sure if their child is really missing and how and wh when and how do they went there. It's, there is nothing wrong in that. And I didn't know why people are saying uh, if there is no need if you know where the child is. These mm. people are saying this. They have been following all as well. And they know that the child is missing. And none of them have made any effort. Then somebody voluntarily said that he wants to see the parents of the missing child before he commence whatever he wants to do. There is nothing wrong with that. That's my contribution. Thank you, my good brother. Thank you so much, my brother. God bless you. God bless you too, my good brother. Okay. Uh, my brother sees no no problem with uh, Sister Ruth Matthew going to to meet with with Siawan. but Siawan is going to come and we are going to ask him as many questions as possible and see what needs to be done. So let's take uh, two more callers. Hello, caller, you can go ahead. Hello, Mister PDT. I greet you, my brother. I greet you, brother. Talk to me. Yes, uh, my own contribution on this uh, issue is about. Uh, uh, people keep complaining that why did um, uh, Mr. Siawa need uh, the mother of uh, 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 testimony and the father? You know, sometimes most of these things, you see, like we Africans, 
We also are not know that if, let's say for example, a child is missing somewhere here in the Western world, then there are a lot of players that just try and they found a lot of children somewhere. White man will ask you with their white machines that they need the blood of the father and the mother so that they can do a DNA so that they can identify that, that child. Mm. And they forget to understand that this. They forget to understand that if if you if uh, CR1 was asking for blood, it would have been a half of that uh, uh, is want to do a rich, uh, like a evil, evil act. But he was just asking for the presence of the mother and the father, for him to for him to look and to search where we can get testimony. I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think even Jesus Christ Himself that was God. He used He created the world just by speaking to things, uttering words, and things happen. But when it comes on earth, He has to use more to make a blind man to see. So most of these things, I don't think for me, what I what I really be, what I really want for us to work on is for us to see how we can get that child back. It doesn't matter what uh, if the mother is there or the father is there. There are some things that need to be done by the link of the people that are involved. You understand? Mm. So for me, what my own contribution, I don't think that there's a problem for CR one or for us to be afraid that uh, why. Does he need the mother or the father for him to prophesy or for him to tell us where we can get the testimony? The mother has been taken to so many places in court. We do not block the government. We do not fight the government. Why, that, why are they taking the mother to court? But if we have a solution that they need the mother for the solution to come out, why are we so much worried about it? I believe uh, uh, the mother of uh, the testimony will not go there alone. Yeah, I believe they yeah. will not kidnap her. I believe this will not use her for ritual. So if her present will be able to, for the child to be found. So what is the reason that we have been worried? Thank you, brother. Your two minutes is up. I appreciate your contribution. My people, I will take the last caller and we call it quits. Uh, let me see this comment. Don't bring don't bring Sia. Don't bring Sia one again. Again, do the remaining in secret. You see, I believe, I don't believe in this notion of doing things in secret. Do you know how many things have been done in secret and they never achieved anything? Me, I believe everything must be brought to public attention. Say, no, go and do it behind the scenes. Go and wait so that you don't alert the enemy, so that the enemy does not know. Me, I want the enemy to know what's happening. And I want the enemy to know that we are coming for them. And I want the enemy to prepare and run out of options because my fight and my battle does not end until the truth is revealed until justice is saved so this thing of saying no let's do things in secret that's the reason why i have a lot of problems with people that have tried to help sister ruth matthew they always say no let's do these things in private no let's keep this private no, no, let, let's not bring it to the public if this case of baby testimony has not been in the public the way it has been in the public through the way that I've been doing it in the public. Do you think Omoto will be having any, any trembling in his camp? Do you think Omoto will be shaken? Do you think Omoto will worry? If, okay, if we decide that, let's not talk about this case anymore. Let's do everything in private. Do you think they'll care? Do you think you'll be able to put them in a corner? You won't. People, you don't understand the logistics, how these things work. Everything, any small discovery you make, about your opponent bring it out let the world know so that they have no place to hide the more you try to do you know like let, let's say i had a problem when we were working on the case of baby testimony the lookalike in zambia they said let's keep it private let's keep it private but up to now it's still private no progress has been made yet so many things they want to keep private which will end up dying without the public knowing and without people having a clear sense of direction of how these things should go. These people must be exposed. When we bring these things out to the public, the world will know. And it will make these people know that the truth is coming out slowly but surely. Eventually, they will break. Omoto will break. He's not made of steel. Omoto is going to reach his breaking point very soon, soon or later. Soon or later, he's going to reach his breaking point and he's going to release baby testimony. This I guarantee you. He may act tough today, tough tomorrow, but he can't act tough forever. There's a time for everything. 
And I believe God is just hardening Momoto's heart so that his destruction will be beyond salvage. Justice for baby testimony. Yes, my sister, I agree with you. I'm going to take two more calls and then we wrap up. Then we call it all. Oh, so many, oh, the problem is some people are trying to call direct, but I always make it clear here that all calls must be on WhatsApp. Mr. PDT. I greet you, my brother. Talk to me. Yeah. There is James Queer from the US. Uh, PDT, thank you so much for your continuation. We talked about now you were given, brother, on the child issue. But we are so happy with you. Uh, the Chantel family, we stand by, we, we stand with you. But um, our issue here, my brother, is that, you know, everybody can come with their own scenario. Everybody can come in their own form, no matter what. Um, but see, I, want, I thought it was Bushiri, so I started commenting on different level. But any, when a devil comes and says, there is where the child is, will be too happy. But um, let us be careful, you know, people meeting roof. Roof is in a devastator of phone right now. Roof can say anything and people you say take it contrary. So we ought to be very careful. Whosoever that want to bring the child out, if you sincerely want to do it for us, for the world to know who you are, you can do it for us so that the child can come out. But meeting Roof, you can do a video call, but that is our fear, okay? So thank you so much. That's my input, sir. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. Stay safe. You know, personally, I could have had a problem if I had a private chat with CR1 and CR1 says, bring Ruth to me. But CR1 has done this publicly to say, I want to meet her. Do you think he will put his entire reputation on the line by compromising? Yet he made a bold claim that in two weeks the child will be found. I don't think so. Let me take two more callers. Hello, caller, you can go ahead. Hello. I greet you. You can go ahead. Hi, Prof. Yes. Um, please. I, I know this is so heated, but um, um, I'm just with those who say, or my take is we should not allow Ruth to... The, I, I don't think the one-on-one -on -one is necessary. Okay. Honestly, if he's that powerful and is everything... I know he knows already all the stories. Actually, we don't even... My point, my, my thinking is, I don't think he needs any 14 days to do whatever he has to do. These are people who live and they know all these things. He has all of the details. It's just to expose, just to say, okay, the best thing he can also do is come on the platform and then really call names and expose these guys. Actually, the first stage is just to expose Omoto as hard as he can, then it will be it. I will not be longer than this. Thank you. But there's no one on one to be to to be done. I don't. It's not necessary, actually. It's not necessary. <laughs> All right, my brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Karopad. What are you saying, <laughs> Prof X? You are like the the DGOs who always say five more minutes and the service never ends. I I I think I'm having that problem as well. I've been saying two more calls, one more call, last call, and look at us. We are still here. I don't know why this okay i've been receiving emails from these useless people from these useless nigerian people you see this nonsense throughout my entire program they'll be sending me these useless hacking emails as if it's facebook sending me this email yet it's some nigerian baby charlatans who will send me an email saying that your page is in violation of some policies so click a link that is below for you to access these boys, we, we have been in these uh, digital spaces for a very long time. Stop sending me these useless emails, okay? I'll never click that link that you want me to click there. So stop wasting your time sending me these emails as if you're, it's coming from Facebook. Every time I receive these emails, I delete them before I even open them. So do you think in my normal senses, I can get a, I cannot verify if this email is coming from Facebook, or it's coming from a Nigerian baby charlatan trying to hack my, my, my platforms. The day that any one of you hacks my platform, that's the day that I'll come out and I'll apologize to Jeremiah Omoto for fame. If Omoto for fame, you are paying these baby charlatans to be trying to hack my accounts, you are wasting your money. Stop it, man. For how long have you been trying? 
Stop it. Don't waste your money paying people coming to you saying that they can do damage control for you. They can do A, B, C, D for you. They can't do anything, these people. They're just useless for one nine Yahoo Yahoo's who have nothing to do with their lives other than thinking that they can hack people's accounts and do A, B, C, D, and E. I don't know how they managed to hack Jeremiah Omoto's Facebook, but it's because there are so many disloyal people around him. That's why they end up entering in his private accounts and deleting some information and gaining access and control over them. So stop wasting your time, you Yahoo's, by sending me useless emails. So my people, I do not want to keep telling people that I'm leaving and then I do not really, and then I do not leave. <laughs> Let me say it for once now in a minute. Let me take this one last call. I promise. This is the last call. I promise. Hello, Professor. I greet you, caller. You can go ahead. You have one minute. I'm sorry. May God bless you, my brother. You always decline my call, though. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be on another call. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Okay, I really commend you for what you are doing for Nigerians. Mm. We are supposed to be the one that will do this. Mm. But as you stand up to fight, the fight that was supposed to fight for Nigeria, I commend you for it. Kudos to you for that. And oh. I really appreciate it. And for uh, see, I want to say, you want to see Sister Ruth, I believe he cannot do any harm because you already know that you are involved in it. Mm. So there's no harm in it because you are involved. Even if you can do something with Sarut, you'll be afraid because you are involved in it. Do you know what I see when he said it? So I believe Sarut needs to see him so that we will see baby testimony. However, it will cost, but our our own is to see baby testimony. That is our own. That's what we want. It's so if they want to see the independence, there's no harm in it. Because do you know what I know? He has said it to you, I said to everybody that he wants to see them. So nothing will harm them. And that's what I believe. So, anybody that is committed that uh, Jeremiah will, will, he will bribe, bribe him. No, Jeremiah cannot bribe CR1. I've never seen you bribe him, but I always know one blogger that always bringing his uh, video out. I watch it through one blogger. He has exposed Nigeria pastors there. If there's one video I saw that he exposed Nigeria pastors. One, one blogger is always bringing it out. So, I don't want to meet all the blogger's name. So, may God bless you. May God continue to protect you. We all are praying for you. Nothing will harm you, Professor. Nothing. Thank you are stand still and you will continue to remain blessed forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So whatever we cause of justice will be testimony. That is what we want. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you, my sister. Stay safe. Amen. That is it, my people. Let's wait for the next episode of the Enlightenment series. And all of you who have joined me live on this broadcast, I appreciate you and I love you. And I hope you stay safe. And I hope you have a wonderful and a blessed evening. So with that being said, I'll check you out on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. I wanted to say something. There's an announcement I wanted to make, but I have forgotten. But CR1 is coming back again on Friday so that you can ask him all the questions that you want to ask him so that he can give you all the answers that you need from the questions that you would have asked. You see, I'll end up saying things that are meaningless because I prolonged this live broadcast longer than I expected. So my people... It's Mr. PDT. I'll check you out again on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. Beza Solonje, no offering today. I, today the streets were tough, Beza. Today uh, there was offering. There was offering. One of my sisters, my usual tight giver, she gave an offering. But uh, the streets were not the same today. <laughs> I think I should bring the Damasis again. The, the Damasis is a crowd puller. It's an offering puller. But with all that being said, I love you, my people. You stay safe. You have a blessed evening. I'm going to check you again. I'll see who I'm going to bring out for you again so that we proceed. We proceed. We proceed. And as for now, let me sign out. Let me go and do other things. And let me go and prepare for the battle of baby testimonies justice. It's Mr. Paul the Trigger. I'm out.